Hey everyone, Donya here. If you have been aware of the furry fandom for any length of time, you know that fursuits are a thing. There are numerous ways to obtain one, whether it be a costume or a pre-made, through an auction commission or make one yourself. And today, I'll be focusing on just that, building your fursuit from scratch. To be more specific, I'll be discussing all the nitty gritty details that they don't tell you when you make your first fursuit. Just imagine the overly specific things that you may not have ever thought of, the mistakes you might make, and how to avoid them. For reference, I have made like 4 fursuit heads, so I definitely learned it from too. This video will primarily focus on heads, but I'll include a lot of general tips you can use for pretty much whatever you decide to create. Also, I'll be adding chapters to this video so that it's a lot more organized, so feel free to skip around. I imagine this will be a pretty lengthy video, so I will deliver you all the information in a weird bullet point format. Um, but in the description, I will be linking like all the tips uh, that I'll be reading off in this video. So now let's get started with the materials. To make a good head or whatever part of your suit, you need to invest in good materials. Cheap does not equal good, nor do those dull scissors you found somewhere in your closet. No, seriously, get rid of those and get new ones. Some important items you would definitely find useful are a good pet shaver as well as an electric knife. You need to get metallic sharpies, fabric chalk, or a white marker. They all will make your life so much easier when tracing your patterns on black or dark materials. There are a million websites where to get your fabrics, but not all of them are going to be good. One website you should definitely forget about is Etsy. While there are definitely some hidden gems in there, I assure you there is a significantly better option on an actual website or fur. This is a mistake I did. I thought, hey, Donny doesn't have too much white fur in her, why would I need to buy an entire yard of white fur just to get a few markings? And the truth is that you're really wasting money. That fur will definitely come in handy later down the line. You want to recreate your head because you aren't satisfied? Well, you can't do that because you need to order more white fur. In the end, you're wasting a lot of money. Now for the actual websites. I don't have too much experience with ordering fur, but here are some amazing suppliers. Howl Fabrics, Fursuit Supplies, and Big Z Fabrics. Now, I would like to make a quick note that these sites that I just listed, along with a few others I imagine, use a supplier called Shannon Fabric. This means that you might see repeating styles, colors of fur in these sites, but again this is just like extra like information. Don't use this or don't rely on this information too much because Big Z Fabrics does have their own line called Eco Shag and that kind of becomes a little bit of a mess if you try to mix and match like your colors so just be aware that's just like a, a quick point that I, I wanted to add how fabrics have an amazing range of color and style they also have minky now so that's amazing their shipping does take a little while compared to the other two but their quality is amazing so it's really worth it Fursuit Supplies is another great supplier. While you should generally avoid things that are marketed for that certain thing you're doing, as they tend to be overpriced, the fur here is a big fat exception. Obviously, I didn't test out all of their furs, but the ones I got were even better than HAL fabrics. They're even slightly cheaper, have quicker delivery, and shave down perfectly. Big Z Fabrics is amazing with what they do. They have so many colors, styles, and lengths of fur. And not only fur, there's minky, there's fake leather, literally everything is on there. They have super fast shipping. The only downside is you can only buy their furs in yards only, but their prices are still absolutely amazing. Such high quality materials and everything. Now for the actual process of creating your fursuit head. Make sure you measure your circumference around the widest part of your head and add a little bit of length to your measurement. A great tutorial I personally follow is by Mugiwara Cosplay. I will link that in the description. When attaching your foam muzzle to your bucket head, try to aim it slightly upwards. The lower your muzzle is, the worse you'll sound. You're going to sound muffled, whereas a slightly tilted up muzzle allows more space for the sound waves to go through. 
When first aid makers tell you to carve out the muzzle, make sure to actually carve it out. Don't make my mistake on my first ever phone base and do whatever the hell this is. You will die from that. A kimono style suit has more breathing and room than this thing. If the inside of your phone mouth is super jagged from all the cutting, no worry. Smooth it out to the best of your ability and then take a cotton fabric piece, the same material most shirts are made out of, and glue it to smooth everything out. It's super breathable material, so it will make no difference to your suit or its practicality. No, this does not mean you should use your shirt or the material as a balaclava that's gross and that nasty bacteria will destroy your suit you're working so hard on. When making your suit and carving out all the pieces, make them skinny. AKA, don't make everything as big as you want it to be. Because the foam base is the skin of your suit, the fur will add a lot of layers and make it bigger and fatter. Look at this hairless cat. And look at this cat of fur. Fur makes a lot of difference. The same concept applies to fur suit making. And this is something I really needed to know before I did this thing. Speaking of which, make the gap between your eyes on the smaller side. Again, the fur will thicken everything. When making a nose, it should protrude out. Even if your character has a small nose, for example if it's a feline. This was a big mistake I made in my last three heads. The nose I made looked good on the foam base, but once the fur and everything was applied, it just didn't look good. I hated lining, but the best piece of advice I can give is to make sure your tape is super tight and split down the middle. Don't use felt or any super thick or absorbent fabric. A lot of fursuit makers use lycra material, but it's a pain in the ass to work with. It's super light and stretches everywhere, and when you glue it inside the head, it's bumpy and it just doesn't look clean. You want your lining to be secure and last a long time, and in my personal experience, I found that lycra is awful. Instead, I use scuba need. It's like swimsuit fabric, it cools, catches your sweat, it's light, it's a little bit thicker, and it's usually a two-way stretch instead of four. It's so much cleaner and it's so much easier to work with. Don't use a lot of glue because it's going to make the inside uncomfortable and hard as a rock. I could never get this part correctly, but for this head I really took my time with everything. And the lining came out absolutely perfect. So just make sure you take your sweet, sweet time with your lining, whether it's the head, paws, or whatever else. Don't use cheap tape from like dollar store like I did. Make sure you get a nice roll of duct tape. Before you start to tape anything, take a close look at your foam base. Is it at least a little bit symmetrical? If the answer is yes, then go ahead and start taping down the center and all around. If your character has asymmetrical patterns, then tape the whole head. Again, make sure your tape is super tight on the head and you use smaller amounts of it. The way you lay it on your base is how accurate your patterns are going to be. You can do anywhere from 2 to 4 layers of tape. Just remember, the thicker, the easier it's going to be to work with, since thinner tape can easily rip and stretch, distorting your pattern. This is an important part in making your head. Please, please, please take your time with it. And if you get angry and frustrated, take a break. Your foam base might look absolutely beautiful, but once you fur, it's going to look terrible just because you are impatient. This is an important part of first in making. It's not going to be easy and it's super time consuming. Don't half ass it and expect it to look like a multicolored bark fursuit. That's uh, me talking to my past self, but this point applies to you as well. Once you're done taping, you're going to draw your markings. And there are a few elements your markings need to have. Color slash material, fur direction, extra cuts for folds, material slash color change, more seam allowance. It's important to make a key, especially if you're working on a very complicated character. This will make sure that you don't get lost. An amazing tip that I have for you here is clear tape. Before you cut everything out, cut tiny squares and rectangles of clear tape and cover all of the markings so that they don't rub off. If you're a sweaty gremlin like me, this will be a lifesaver. Make sure you take a million photos of your head all taped up from different angles. Make videos, just be excessive with it. You don't know when you're going to need it. 
After you're done cutting all of your pieces, again, take your time with them. I never gave my patterns a paper backing, but I tried it this time and it's super sturdy and secure. On the back, I rewrite what the piece is and basically mirror the front. For the material, I use Vinyl Ida 13 count 12 by 18 inches. I'll have the link to that in the description. Usually getting any material marketed as fursuit eye material is overpriced or you don't get a good amount of it. I suggest using this material instead, it's see-through, easy to paint and very cheap. It does smell like rubber but it airs out in a couple of days. You can't really print on it unless you paint it white first. I personally prefer 2D eyes over 3D eyes but and I don't have much to say for this part except that it's important to get it right. Make sure that if you're painting your eyes you, you poke out all the holes that got filled with paint. Don't use too much paint and use a piece of foam to dab into color and use thin layers to achieve the perfect look. It shouldn't be thick. This is your vision, make sure you can see through it. Make sure the back of the buckram is painted black, it will make it much easier on the eyes to see through. When you assemble the eyes together, you can use hard felt to cover the ugly part of the eye if you painted it like I did. Make sure you install the eyes after the lining and before the fur. Whew, that was a lot and it hurts to speak now. But that's what I have for you guys today. I hope somebody out there found these tips useful. Again, it wasn't really a tutorial, but more of like the things they don't tell you before you make your first head or whatever. So if you found this video useful, just make sure to follow me on Instagram at vade.lon where I'm the most active. I'd love to make more videos in the future, so if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. Bye bye.